All right, it's a minute after nine, so let us begin today. A couple of announcements for you. Um, come in like usual. Uh, come forward, Lynn will be first, and Jeff will follow Lynn, and she's then, and I'll give you a hand, Jeff. And Terry and Sue will follow them on this site. And next weekend, we go back up to the sanctuary. So you better hope for the cold weather we've been having um, all throughout this week, because we'll be back in there without fans. It'll be fine. And remember also that the uh, time changes. We will do 8 and 9. Lynn has requested 8 o'clock in the morning, because she's, you know, a very early morning person. <laughs> so anyway, 8 and 9 next week, same deal. Watch the blue flag come in through the glass entry door. All the protocols remain. Nothing changes, but we'll just be in that room. At 9.30 then, uh, for those who wish, we'll have an intergenerational education experience, all ages, however you want to phrase it. Um, at 9.30, you may remain seated right in the chairs that you were seated in during worship. And for the first um, six weeks of the of the year we will be looking at the topic of race and racism in that uh in that worship in that uh, education time so stay in your chairs if you wish to stay and be a part of that it's geared to um everybody anybody will be able to participate in just about all of it well there's not a lot of participation because we can't be touching and all that stuff but um the, the material that we'll be talking about and addressing is good for all ages so that's all next week. On September 22nd at noon, we're trying something new. It's called Brown Banking with Chris. Chris Sanders will lead the group. Um, we can have 12 people. 12 people can participate. It will be in this room so that you're physically distanced. You bring your own lunch at noon. Come here, share lunch, and then um, just a casual conversation. So each week or each month when we do this, we're going to have a topic to uh, reflect on, and the topic this month is living alone, <clears throat> living alone during the pandemic. Now, you don't have to live completely alone. If there's a couple of you living together, that's perfectly fine. Anybody's welcome to come. Um, but we can only have 12 people so that we can be distanced and safe. So if you plan to come to that, we ask that you uh, make a reservation at the church office, through the church office, on or before September 20th. Um, we'll, we'll, that's next Sunday. So after next Sunday, we'll decide if it's gonna happen or not. So if you call in on Monday um, and it's been canceled, that's because you didn't call in on time. Um, so please consider doing it in a timely manner and then we can keep the number at a safe amount at 12. So bring your lunch and just enjoy, and enjoy hopefully safe conversation and fellowship the best way we can produce it um, during these limited times. We've got a blood drive coming up on this Tuesday right here in this room. Um, it is from noon until 5. Terry has all the volunteers. He's also telling me that 55 out of the 59 slots have been reserved. So there's very little opportunity for additional people to give, but you could still go on the Red Cross website or call Laura when she's in the office this um, tomorrow and see if you can squeeze in. Remember, you can't come if you don't have a reservation. Also remember that the Blood Cru uh, Red Cross only allows um, people who are giving blood into the building. So you can't bring a spouse or partner or a child or pet dog or your cat or anything else with you um, when you come to donate blood. So that's this Tuesday. There's also a church council meeting this Tuesday in the evening. I think I saw the um, Buttermoses running around the building. <laughs> and of course, they went to that door, and then they went in that direction when they should have come to this direction, because that's where the blue flag is. And I keep saying, follow the blue flag. But when they come in, we'll make fun of them, and then um, we'll be getting the service. I don't, now I don't see where they went. Maybe they're afraid to come in. Oh, oh well, well, we'll see what happens. Maybe it was somebody else, but... No, somebody else saw them too? Okay. All right, well, we'll, uh, we'll welcome them when they, when they show up. 
Um, anything else? Lynn has a new hip. Did y'all know that? Anybody got a good hip joke? Who's, who's coming in? Nobody. Well, yeah. Um, Lynn, has it, anybody got a good hip joke? No? Okay, all right, well, work on it, and then next week we'll have some time for hip jokes. Okay, with that, I'll invite everybody to be silenced, and we will uh, pre prepare our hearts for worship during this prayer. <laughs> now learned who reads those massive emails that I send out and who doesn't. You know the emails that say, enter by following the blue flag. Well, I think the book promotes is follow the blue flag. They just took the long route to get to it. So we're glad you're here this morning. I'd seen you out there looking for a way to get in. <laughs> we're glad you came. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Great God, thank you for your gift of forgiveness. Help us to understand when we need to forgive our neighbor. Give us compassionate hearts that are ready to do that often. Also, make us aware when we need to seek pardon from our neighbors for our own transgressions. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. The reading today is from the 18th chapter of St. Matthew. Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive them? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions, and payment to be made. So the slave then fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of the house of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that very same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves, who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. When his fellow slave saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and they reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, 
you wicked slave. I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay for his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. So I know a word that most of us don't like, and it's not pimple or ointment, two of the worst words in the, Amer in the English language, if you ask me. This is a different word. It often troubles us. Sometimes it agitates us. Sometimes it just makes us panic, this word does. We don't even like to sometimes have to say the word out loud. And since it's a verb, there are many times that we don't like to do the word. In fact, we're really good at finding excuses to avoid having to do this entirely. The word is forgive. Forgive. We are called to forgive. We are called to forgive not once, but to forgive and to forgive and to keep on forgiving. So my gospel reading today from Matthew, forgiveness means to let go or to release or to cancel out. Peter was told by Jesus to forgive, to let go, to get over it. Like Peter, we are all called by Jesus to forgive as well. Now we should note that forgiveness is not unique to the followers of Christ. Whether you are religious or non-religious, you must frequently request forgiveness, and all people do. And whether you are religious or non-religious, you also must frequently grant forgiveness. It's not just a Christian thing. Forgiveness happens every day, probably just about every minute of our lives. Now we should also recognize that most of our transgressions, most of the things that we do are trivial and unintentional. You know, things like throwing out the morning coffee before you realize that someone in your house is still drinking it, or um, leaving the toilet seat cover up when you get done using it, or eating the last two pieces of chocolate cake without West asking your wife if she would like one. I don't know who does that, but I heard that it happened once. My philosophy is eat the cake, ask for forgiveness. <clears throat> Those are all trivial issues. They're not the issues that Jesus and Peter are talking about in the Gospel lesson. They're not issues that hurt and harm people particularly. Peter and Jesus were addressing hard issues, issues that hurt and harm other people. They were responding to various concerns and offenses that might have serious outcomes for others. They were talking about offenses that happened intentionally and often frequently. Getting even or developing a plan to seek revenge, those are the kinds of transgressions that explain what Peter and Jesus were talking about. And Jesus calls us to renounce revengeful behavior and to find other ways to respond to those who, heart, who transgress against us. But at the same time that we're called to forgive and respond, we're also not expected to be doormats. We are not expected to just simply expect, accept hurtful behavior. Forgiveness of others should never be confused with a sentimental toleration of hurtful behavior. Many years ago, when I was a social worker, um, I had a client whose husband beat her extremely horribly, extremely horribly, the worst situation I had ever experienced. She, of course, ended up in the hospital. She ended up with broken jaw on both sides, everything wired shut, and she was pregnant. And, of course, for a long time, there was great concern about whether she would be able to continue to carry the baby. She did, but I honestly don't know if the delivery was okay. But despite all that, when the husband was finally released from the county jail in northern Wisconsin, what did she do? She took him back home because she knew deep down he loved her and he, she could forgive him. 
Forgiveness means holding ourselves and holding other people accountable for the behaviors that they exhibit, that we or they exhibit. It's not okay to ignore troubling and difficult and hurtful behavior from someone. We could look at people who are addicted to alcohol or drugs. Addiction is a very, very difficult thing to overcome. We all know that. And we don't give up on people who are addicted. But we won't help someone to overcome that addiction and that difficult behavior by dismissing the behavior. Or by saying things like, well, those words or those actions came while they were under the influence. It still comes. Forgiveness means we will help the addicted individual to be accountable as well. It's also not okay to be the victim of spousal abuse just because you have a marriage covenant. Tolerating abuse from a spouse or a partner is not required just because you spoke vows that included loving someone for better or for worse. And unfortunately, I've experienced too many Christian counselors in the world who would suggest you got to get over it, you got to forgive and go on because you have a commitment. It's never okay to be the victim of someone's lying and deceitful behavior just because you were willing to forgive them. When Jesus calls on us to forgive and calls on us to seek forgiveness, he never ever tells us that it's okay for us to be a target. So it is not okay to be satisfied to live racially oppressed lives just because you're able to forgive your oppressors. That still needs to change. Holding people accountable is part of the forgiveness process. So, we are called to forgive because the way we earn God's love is by forgiving others. We earn God's forgiveness when we constantly forgive others. Right? Yeah. Yeah. No! For crying out loud, wake up. I just lied to you. Now we've got to ask for forgiveness. <laughs> the only one who knew the answer was Verilla, and she was here last night. <laughs> what did I just lie about? Yeah, okay, if you were awake, anybody that was awake, what did I just lie about? Forgiveness is free. The truth about God's forgiveness is this. Listen up. Listen closely. God forgives us First, God forgives us first, unconditionally and often. No one, no one stands outside of God's forgiveness. No one has committed an atrocity so huge that God won't forgive them. Humans might have a different response or consequences for people's actions, but nobody can... There's nobody who God will refuse for forgiveness. Nothing is too horrendous to bring before God. And it is in this forgiveness that we receive from God where our willingness to forgive others should be grounded. Our understanding of we are forgiven, therefore we go out to forgive. Forgiveness requires patience and generosity. That's what God extends to each one of us. And that's what we are called to extend to each other. So, you might ask the question, how many times should I forgive? I forgave Randy last week for doing that. And the answer is 77 times. Because God keeps forgiving us, we can keep on forgiving others. Amen. The hymn today is softly and tenderly Jesus is calling, sung by our very own tenor, for Ellen Klein. Oh, 
retaliation. May the forgiveness you offer us always ground our willingness to forgive others. We seek world leaders who will work cooperatively so that the events of September 9, 2001 will not be repeated. We lift to you all immigrants seeking asylum in our nation. We lift to you those, those who are struggling with wildfires and tropical storms particularly Hurricane Sally as it's moving on to the Gulf Coast tomorrow. Be with children, students, and teachers and give them the tools and wisdom to be safe at schools and, and universities as they resume. Give parents and caregivers patience to support virtual learning. We pray for all people who struggle during this pandemic. Give us the courage to stay healthy and emotionally stay, sane. May we use our skills to match people with employment opportunities. Guide the church to be a leader and a healer during this time. May the church also be a leader in condemning racism and all forms of oppression. Today we lift up Laura and Sterling and all seminarians as school began this past week. Give comfort to anyone who is grieving today and uplift those who are ill, including Mary, Georgia, and anyone else whom we now name out loud or in the silence of our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen. God, you are full of forgiveness and compassion. You show us mercy every day. You gave us the creation to enjoy and to care for. You have given us this simple meal to remind us that we are all the same as we come to the table. You have given us this meal to assure us that the gifts of Jesus are gifts for all of us. At this meal, we can realize that no one stands outside of your love. Help us to make this table a place of inclusion. With gratitude, we remember the words of Christ. And we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread he gave thanks and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. 
It's shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And together we pray the traditional words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and eat. This meal is ready, and it's for you. As you are eating, I'm going to go back and um, get a few more wafers for us. Um, so don't mind me that I'm walking around the room. Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love God, love your neighbor, and love yourself. Thanks be to God. Amen. You are dismissed. Go home. <laughs>